Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've spent the last um, while just sort of tinkering with things back, back down on Norvis because I've got to the point where I've got I've got I've got things going quite well up in uh, in the space station, but I wanted to get on with some stuff. I wanted to sort of tidy some stuff up, and also I need there were some extra supplies I needed for, in the rocket from Norvis, and some of them were being built a bit too slowly, so I thought it was time to uh, to go down and make some improvements to that. So there've been a few things I've done while I've been down here. One of them is this um, is this extra coal mine down here. So this is down all the way down on the sort of the front lines where I've been pushing out to. So I built up a coal mine here, and I put in defences here to keep this area safe. Uh, I put in two separate outpost stations here, and the reason I've done that is because with this internal corner like this, um, you don't want to have the robots from here trying to get down to here because they'll fly out over the space in between and could potentially get shot down. So I've got them on two separate RoboPort networks. One that's being fed from this station, and yes, those do join, just, and one that's being fed from the station down here. And that so that provides complete coverage of the wall, but it means they're they're kept separate from, from the uh, for the for the needs of sort of the, the robots getting shot down essentially. Now Possibly, in hindsight, I probably should have just had one outpost station here and then fed some of the stuff across using a belt or something down to here. Uh, I've already got the ammunition just being brought in here and, and passed up, so the ammunition and the light oil, but... Um, what's complaining? No, that's not complaining, it's a flat flame. Um, so that's that's being just coming from the one station. But it would have been sl probably been slightly saner to have a single outpost station about here and then split things out for the two, for, for the two different... Um, setups but never mind I mean it, it'll work absolutely fine like this it's just a little bit more work for the train to do <laughs> that, that's fine it can it can deal with that I do need to um, this this means at this point I can now start thinking about maybe clearing up some of these these little sort of temporary outposts but I do have a bit more wall to build yet there's the one that goes across here there's the one that goes across here and one across here and those are still still to be done and there's still quite a lot of biters around here so I'm going to leave the outposts as they are until at least until I've got all of that set up what have we lost here the, occasionally <laughs> occasionally the biters manage to just damage a pipe and then that that um, takes out the, the the fuel supply for the later on turrets so this one is actually doing okay still there's uh, there's still plenty in there so it's not it's not going to be a problem for a while maybe by the time it is I'll have extended even further because having once I've got this bit and this bit if I do this, this bit as well then I don't need this this area anymore so yeah it's it's one of those things that as you start to expand you, you you think well actually if I just went a little bit further it'd be even easier so for example here if I, if I decide to push down to here and then across here 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 this way that would be probably be less wall in total than going across this bit because we've got a couple of quite long pieces in here but it would be an enormous area to clear of biters, so it would take forever just to, to actually do that expansion. So it seems sort of worth it, but then, I, I don't know, there are, there are more interesting things to do. I don't really want to spend loads and loads of time doing that sort of, doing that sort of expansion, because I just I can't really be bothered with it, to be honest. So one of the things, as I said there, while I was out here building, I thought, well, I might as well snap up this coal patch, because I believe coal is something I'm a bit short of. Um, and I've just been out here because I didn't put down the uh, combinator there, so that needed needed to uh, needed to head out and put that in in its place, so that trains can actually be summoned. Uh, let's take my train back up to where it's where it where it parks up there. Right, and while that's on its way, I can look at other, the other things I've been up to down here. So I've been um, one of the big things I've had a shortage of up in in space is the uh, uranium two three five that I need for some of the some of the some of the more exotic energy science. It, it, there's a, there's a radiation um, pack I think that that we need to, we need that for. Um, and so uh, previously I had just had this little bit of Covarex running here, and that wasn't remotely enough. It was far too slow. So I've um, expanded it a little bit. Uh, there's literally six times as many machines running for this now, um, and it's it's kind of working. I, last time I looked at it, it was there was wasn't enough uranium two three eight being produced, so we were um, only about four out of well, four and a half of the rows were running at full speed. Now it seems to have caught up, and I'm not really sure why because I don't know what's changed. Uh, but I mean, I'm not going to complain if it's, it's now seems to be working better. The thing is, though, with Covarex, so when I put all of these extra ones in, and then I stole all of the, well, lots of the uranium-235 from all of these chests here, and then spread it out through all the rest of them. And the problem with that 
is it means that we now have to wait ages for these to actually fill back up again. So you can see this chest down here is actually actually is completely empty. And the way it works is these will fill up until they get to 100 and then they'll dump 10 out like that. So this one has a long, long way to go before it's actually ready. And so it's, it's a multiple step process. I was dropping, I dropped 50 Uranium-235 into each of these, which is enough to get, make a Coverex machine run. Um, but then it takes 40 each time. So, so that means they will stockpile 80 inside the machine itself and then dump out any anything above eight, anything above eighty will just get left will let remain in the box. Let's let's try explaining that again and, and do it properly. So the box for the uh, here should have some enough. So the machine here will run. It'll turn forty uh, two three five and some two three eight into forty one two three five, which is why you you make a profit on that one. And it then dumps it all out onto this piece, little piece of belt here, and it go, then goes into this box, which then passes it round. So the two three five then gets put back into the machine, so it can all be, it can all run again. It puts a little bit of 238 out as well, which you can see is there, and which is why there's another circuit condition going down to these these inserters to tell them to only insert when there's none, no 238 in, in this box. So that just stops it building up in this box. So that'll pass it around and around and around, and eventually you get you get to the point where you're you've got 80 in here already, and there's still one left in here, and so you, and that one won't therefore won't be loaded in because you've already got. 40 that are being used and 80 that are the next two cycles for that for that machine. So you end up then you start to accumulate little bits of the um, of the 235 in here. That will gradually increase until, as I was saying, you finally have 100 in there, and then this inserter will take 10 of those and drop them onto the belt. And you can see here we've got these 10. So there's a couple of them are just finished there. So that means after dropping the 50 into one of these into one of these boxes to get the machine started. You then need to produce another 70 to completely fill this up, plus another 100 for this one. So you need to produce 170 235 before it'll actually start to unload onto this belt. And that's a lot. That takes a very, very long time. And that's why this this one that has been running solidly since I built it is now up to 60 something, I think that was. So let's. Well, when it finishes running, when it finishes passing it around, uh, let's look at this one. this one. Okay, this one's up at 99. That's pretty good. This one's at 65. So. It's taking quite a long time to get these to the point where they're actually pretty usefully producing uranium. So, despite all of despite all of that expansion, we've still only got thirteen thousand over here, and it was at eleven, twelve thousand, I think, before I started before I started this. So, unfortunately, adding all of this in has essentially stopped the the production of um, two three five uh, has stopped the output of two three five for quite a long time while we wait for it to catch up. And these ones obviously caught up a little bit more quickly because they've got more. It because they had the internal buffers were still full. It was only the chests that had been emptied. But yeah, it's going to be a long time until this actually lives up to its full potential. However, it is now at that point. I did then run into the problem that with all of this running, I was getting through the uranium ore a lot faster than before, and so I was starting to get complaints from the station here that there wasn't enough uranium ore available. So. I made it so I came down here. I made a copy of this mine, which is actually completely defunct and needs to be ripped up and, and tidied away. And I've put in two copies of that down here because there are a couple of they're, they're quite small uranium patches, but that doesn't really matter. They're a bit yes, they're small. It's not producing uranium particularly quickly, but it's producing it, and that's what that's what matters. And and down here we've got another one. So these two between them are granted between the two of them, they're producing the uranium a lot slower than it's being used, but. It adds on to what what I've got, and then I've got a couple of larger uranium mines somewhere. I I can't even find them. One's over here. So there, yeah, there's one here. This is producing it a little bit quicker. This is probably producing it almost as fast as the um, as the uranium process is using it up. And I think there's another one somewhere because this is number five, and I've only had one die so far. I think. That brings me on to another thing I've been thinking perhaps I should do, and let's go around and tidy up some of these dead mines like, like this one. This is completely exhausted. It's pulled up all of the stone that was in this patch. So I could go in here, I could rip all this up and, and reuse the miner somewhere else, reuse the belt somewhere else, and also send in a train to manually because there isn't enough in this station to completely to summon a train automatically because that triggers at 20,000. There's only 16,000 in there. Um, so, but if I send in a train manually and then tell it to go off and unload and just you just control these things manually, then I can actually get that little last bit out of it. There's another dead stone mine here. There's another one here that's nearly run out. So, I yeah, I would need to look around, look around all of the mines, just find the ones that have got these little little bits left. They're trying to finish off, and the ones that are actually dead, and just do a bit of tidying up. There's no actual need for doing that, 
Here's another dead mine, no iron mine. But it does, it sort of feels tidy and it means I'm pulling those resources, all the miners back out again into, and putting them back into circulation so they can be reused somewhere else. The next thing I realised I was short of, all that I was getting through enormous quantities of, is the um, the space station scaffolding, this stuff. Um, and we get through a huge, huge quantities of that because that's ev everything I build in space needs needs to be put down on some of this. And so I had a look at the, um, the supplies down here. We've got the rocket here is requesting, or the space station is requesting some of it. There's 5.1 thousand less in the rocket than it's requesting. So we've got a lot of this to come in. And I discovered that the limiting factor for this was the, um, was the heat shield tiles. And now heat shield tiles are interesting because heat... There we go. Because there's two ways to make them. There's a traditional recipe here that I was using before that uses 20 stone tablets, 8 sulphur, 2 steel plates. Alternatively, you can switch over to the iridium based one that drops stone tablets down by a factor of 5 and the sulphur down by a factor of 8. And interestingly, it produces them, it takes exactly the same amount of time to produce them, but it's just a lot cheaper in ingredients. So I thought, well, I've got iridium now. I've got this, re I've got this recipe, this, this um, science done. So let's go in down here. Let's. So I went down to the. Why is the complaint? Why is it? Oh, it's lights. I don't care about those. So I came down here to this. Um, this is where I'm making the the. I, I was making the um, the heat shield tiles using the old recipe, and it's cutting off about here, um, because this this many of them was the maximum number I could run off a single belt of the a uh, single half belt of the sulfur that I was piping in. And to be honest, when I built this, I didn't realise quite how many I was going to need. I mean, I, I knew I was I, I needed some for these uh, these furnaces. I think I had some that were being used for various rocket parts and a little bit for the space station but I wasn't growing it at anything like the rate I am now so I didn't realize how under under uh, under supplied this this whole thing was and so um, I've now gone in I've switched it over to the new recipe and I've made about three or four copies of this so it's that much two three three and a half copies of it along here just to basically fit it in up to this railway line here and now looking at this well the, it hasn't backed up yet However, if I scroll up back up this belt, um, it's yeah, it's all still going into the into the rocket. But there's there's quite a lot coming through. We're, we're making it fast enough that this belt is almost full. And more importantly, the limiting factor for making these, uh, what do you call it? The the scaffolding things is now something else. We're now limited by the amount of low density structures we're making instead. So that's um. So that means the heat shield tiles aren't a problem there anymore. I think the rest of them are all just getting fed into the... No, they're not even getting fed into the rocket. Even the rocket's got enough now. So these will start to, to back up now, I think. In fact, yes, if we look at this, you can see it's now... This belt is now is now starting to back up. So we, we're producing it we're producing it faster than we're using it. So that's a good sign. Low density structures, not so much. Uh, where are we making those? Here we go. There's a massive facility here making them. Um... And it seems to be essentially maxed out. It's what's the limit? The limiting factor here is the amount of plastic that's coming in. Okay. However, what what what, what I am aware of since I built this, I've also now built up a, a a system down here that's making low density structures, and this is completely backed up, and this is making them in a significantly more efficient way as well. So, the obvious answer to this is to squeeze in. Um, an extra station in here somewhere that's going to drop down some more low density structures. Where where are they first needed? This is an important question. Going up here. Okay, so the first needed for these science packs here, the yellow science. So I need to get them in here or lower. So if I put in if I put in a station on top of this one, I can then rip up all of this, get rid of it completely. I don't need this anymore, and bring it all in by train. So I need to do that now. Um, I, often, I, I sometimes get requests on my on my videos to uh, to actually sh show my working a little bit and and it, it include bits of me actually building things. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'm going to put this in here. Now one of the things I've learned is it's very important to remove at least something on your um, on your lo to stop the combinator immediately being linked up to the station because if I did that if I just left that as it was I would suddenly get an unexpected supply of iron in here. Um, that is going to have to be moved to there, should we say? Yeah, so if I just left this as it was, I would have got a train full of iron appearing here, and that would have been a bit of a problem because I don't I don't want iron here. 
Is that everything? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Okay, I'll have to delete that. I don't want a massive quantity of iron to suddenly turn up here because that's not what this station is for. This is going to be a low-density structure station. It's a little bit over spec because we've got the um, the blue belts coming out of it, but the way at the rate I'm making blue belts out there at the moment, that's fine. Blue belts are cheap. I'm also going to need to have some sort of curvy thing here in the landfill for the for the railway to come out. Um, is that going to cover it? E not quite. I think I need a little bit more there for the um, uh, signal. Is that pipe going to be in the way? That pipe's going to have problems as well. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? You go and you think, I'll just make a little change here and then there's, there's all these complications. But never mind, I, I can get there. Why are you not happy? Okay. No, no good reason for that to not be happy. Okay, we'll get that built up. Maybe, maybe I accidentally deleted it when I was trying to dismount, uh, reduce this station a little bit. So, over here, I'm gonna. S I'll stick with blue belts actually. Oh, why not? Um, so I can just bring that straight over here, like this. Put in some underground belts like that, and then I can. Um, I can just bring this in and, and, and go straight in there. And I think that means it's probably a good time to chop off the inputs on this. Like that. And, oh, this is all just like that then, I guess. This whole area is just, just inputting there. And also, what's the other one? It's this one. So I don't need those anymore. I'll go in and tidy this up a little bit more properly in a minute. But at the moment, I just want to stop stop the resources disappearing into here. And there's a couple of reasons that this is going to be better. One is that they're being made in much larger quantities. There's a much bigger facility down at the bottom. And it's also a much newer, system, much newer design. So if you look at these ones, they're assembly machine Mark IIs with two um, efficiency, two productivity modules in them. So that means they run slowly um, and they have a... Where is it? They, they have a productivity boost of 16%. Whereas... Oops, did the wrong thing. Over here where I'm making them on mass, I'm using the assembly machine threes and I'm using those with, um, so they've got four productivity modules in them, so they've got a 32% boost. So we're getting an extra, twice as much extra free stuff out of this, which is a big, a big improvement. And we're also beaconing them, so they're running a lot faster and they're using a lot less electricity. And just generally, this is a, a newer, sleeker design that won't have the same sort of throughput problems because it's fed directly by trains for the ingredients. It, you don't have to worry about everything on the bus. Um, have I? Oh no, I, I did come back in this train. That's good. So now I'm I'm over here myself. I can start doing the sort of the the tweaky tweaky tidy uppy bits that are difficult to do remotely. Oh, actually that does fit. I didn't need to put that extra landfill in. Never mind. So now, oh yes, yeah, so I need a and I do need to put a constant combinator in here. Do I have any? Yes, I've got four. Good, that can go there. And I want to, I didn't really I ideally I wouldn't have delete I wouldn't have deleted that. I'd have kept it and just removed the wire, because then I wouldn't have had to reprogram it like this. Um What? Copy. Paste. There we go. That's better. I was gonna say thank goodness for long reach, but I'm actually not sure if long reach was needed there. I, I've it's been so long since I've played without it that I, I can't. I can no longer remember which bits you use long reach for and which bits you don't. Okay, so low density structures. I think they stack to 50. So I think I can probably request 10,000. Um, have that trigger at six because it certainly doesn't stack up as high as iron does. And now if I link that in like this, then that should. Oh, I need to reprogram these inserters because I certainly can't have them um, trying to unload iron because there isn't going to be any. <laughs> Let's do that. There we go. That's my uh, low density structures. The train has been summoned. Good. And if I come over here... Ah, yes. I need to now... Um... Well, eventually this is going... This this system down here is going to fall asleep. Just, just, just stop. Um, because it's going to run out of inputs. As it is, there's some of these ones down here. What have we run out? Yeah, we've run out of plastic. That's that's fairly predictable. Okay, so I'm just going to pull all of this up now. I don't need any of this anymore. All of this is just here for the... Um, 
Okay, stop that. <laughs> all of this is just here for the uh, for the low density structure, so I can pull this all, all this up too. Don't need that. Okay, there we go. So that's just I'm producing. What am I even producing? What are, are these? Explosive cannon shells. So these are for the tank, which I don't, I don't do. I don't use the tank at all because, I, to be honest, I tend not to get into fights very much anymore. And or what I do, the fights I do get into are, are all sort of dealt with by artillery and um, walls and walls of turrets. Oh dear, I've cut the power off. There we go. Yeah, having the the blue belt coming in. Oh, I don't know what I was going to do. I was going to upgrade all of this to blue, because that means I then get there's a splitter up here where it goes off to the other, goes off onto the bus. Now this is a bit unnecessary actually, because now now I look at this, there's only half a belt there. But um, this mean with this with it set up like this, that means I've always got the full amount to get available to go this way and this way. I don't need to worry about throughput anywhere along there. Um, but until then, it can come through at just yellow belt speeds. So there we go. Now we've got it coming through, and this this the bus will now always be absolutely full of um, of low density structures, because I've got, in theory at least, I've got them being produced because they're being produced in such large quantities down there on that other station. I shouldn't have any problems ever again with that. Monitor this going up here, but I'll uh, I'll fast forward that. I'll fast forward through that a little bit, so um, <laughs> so you don't have to watch it going up at um, at yellow belt speed. I do sometimes wonder if I should go through my entire bus and upgrade the entire thing to uh, to blue belts, just so it's got more throughput, just more just more bus. Well, I have to admit that took a bit longer than I was expecting, but they've got here now, <laughs> and they're all being grabbed up by the um, scaffolding machines now. So we'll. That should all start running, and we should get. Hopefully, that there are that have now run out of things that we can be that it can be limited by. So let's have a let's fly up there myself. We can do that much more quickly than uh, watching the belt go. I like this jetpack thing. It's one, one of the most useful parts of the mod, perhaps. And yeah, as you can see here, we've got yeah the the recipe only takes one of each of the things. Um, I could put, I could module this up, get more, get it gets to be a bit more efficient, but I don't, I don't know. At the moment, it's running. If I did, if I did put the um, productivity modules in, I'd want to put in an enormous number more machines so that I didn't lose, so to, to compensate for the uh, the speed decrease. Um, but as it is, I think the ingredients are probably cheap enough that I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll just let that let that run through now. And as you as you can see, it's now running. A lot faster and a lot more um, productively than it was before. So, good. Um, and looking at it, I, I actually could add in a lot more machines to get even more of it out. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll add that in it as well. Okay, so that's sort of most of the. I think I think that's that's pretty much everything I've been up to for, um, recently. Uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna pretty much call that an episode here. Uh, in the next episode, I should be heading back up into space and 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 messing around with some of the science up there and trying to make some. Um, Trying to make science, trying to make it faster, trying to make it bigger, better, and deeper. Uh, yeah, just generally get everything um, improved. As it is, there's quite a lot of stuff that I've been running out, running short of um, while I've been up there. And there's th things like the pipes I've been getting through a lot of, the uh, the scaffolding and so on. And so I'm just making sure that this is getting all restocked by this rocket. And how much is in the rocket now? Actually, that rocket is getting close enough to fall that I wouldn't feel bad about going up it. So that's been uh, it's been a fairly productive time. Being the uranium, the improvements to well now to the uh, the low density structures on the in, um, on on the bus and the the heat shield tiles wherever they were down here somewhere. And yeah, I think that's going all going quite well. So until the next episode, uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.